Brian passing former shooting guard with the Alabama Crimson Tide color commentary. Does it all. Uh, Brian, I don't even know what to ask you. Uh, <laughs> this morning, do I ask you about the game or do I ask you if we're going to have the game? I don't even know what to ask you at this point. No, uh, no medical questions, please. Uh, <laughs> could you define man, coronavirus for me? <laughs> I cannot. Um, man, crazy, crazy times. Uh, no, no matter what you think about what's going on around the country, um, I think we can all agree that. This is uh, crazy, unprecedented. I've I've never uh, seen anything like it. Just to see the news unfold yesterday is you know, conference tournaments were either deciding to not have fans or not play. The NCAA tournament not having fans, which is just that in itself is mind blowing. And and yesterday, last night, I was doing the game, uh, the Arkansas Vanderbilt game on Sirius Radio. And uh, my phone starts blowing up with the NBA uh, canceling the season. <laughs> so, like, oh, my gosh, this yeah. is absolutely crazy. So, uh, you know, just hard to hard to put it in perspective. So what are they telling you right now? Uh, and, I mean, you're probably sitting there looking at your phone saying, are we going to go? Are we not going? What, what What is the latest right now coming out of Nashville? Well, you know, anything that happens, I wouldn't be surprised right now. Uh, sure. Because it, with the, what's going on, I – you know, I'm planning on going over to the arena in a few hours and in and, and, uh, Alabama and, and Tennessee playing uh, with very, very limited fans. Um, it sounds like that's the plan. That's the plan I'm going with until I hear otherwise. Um, so I, I haven't heard or even rumors of anything changing in that regard. But, um, boy, this thing has, has changed quickly. Um, it did last, yesterday. I don't think there was any thought that, uh, fans wouldn't be allowed inside of Bridgestone Arena, and I think what I'm, what you know, what they're going to do is let um, a family in. Um, each player probably gets four or five tickets, something like that, and uh, administrators and, and traveling party will be in the arena. Um, it's my understanding, no band, no cheerleaders, um, and no no fans, which will make for a very strange atmosphere inside of Bridgestone Arena, assuming. Uh, that we played the tournament. Uh, Dad's up there. I was just wondering, like, is he going to be able to get in? I, I mean, I got a media pass up there. So when they say essential uh, people, I, I have a feeling he'll work his way in the building, Brian. You want to <laughs> you want to put a wager on whether he gets in the building or not? He's he's got a better chance than me. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, and, and listen, when they said who, who they're going to let in, I was feeling good when I heard media. Uh, in press passes, and I was feeling kind of concerned when they said essential, um, <laughs> because <laughs> I am not essential. But I do have a, a fancy uh, press pass that hopefully will get me in the game. And you know, I was talking to Cecil Hurt yesterday uh, when all the news was breaking, uh, and you know he was wondering if they were going to let me in. And you know I, I told him, I tell you, I thought you know the the. If you're going to play the game without fans, which is, of course, the plan, um, the media is, is more important than ever uh, yeah. to to be able to report what's going on behind the scenes. Nobody's there. I've talked to several friends uh, that have, are already in Nashville, already have hotel rooms. They're here, and they're, they're upset. Um, you know, they're not – I don't think they're mad with anybody in particular, just the situation. And uh, they – this is a trip that – isn't cheap um you know it, it's it's a it's something that a lot of fans around the sec look forward to and uh it's it's going to be strange inside the arena but it's also going to be strange around the streets of nashville because i think a lot of people uh that have paid for their hotel room non-refundable aren't able to get their money back they're going to hang out and enjoy uh downtown nashville which is a great place in itself so uh last night was strange i hope things settle down i hope we play the games that's my uh, that's that's what I, I think is going to happen, but I guess you never know. Uh, well, it's uh, for the coaches. I, I think it's. I was thinking about this earlier this morning. Uh, how do you get your team ready? Like they're sitting there thinking, "Man, this thing's not going to happen." They're not going to be fans in there. Uh, how do you get them to focus on what their job is? And is there any fear there? Well, like some players may say, man, I play ball. I don't care. Some people may be you look at the Rudy Gobert thing and say, well, I don't really want to go out there. What, what, how does Nate Oates, in your opinion, 
Uh, if this ball does get thrown up at uh, this afternoon, how does he have these guys mentally ready to play today? Or on the other side, too. I mean, Tennessee's got the same yeah. problem. Yeah, it's going to be a challenge just because, um, you know, if it, if it was just for whatever reason, like, you know, we, you know, I was in Atlanta in 2008. And, yeah, me you too. know, that was, you know, in, in, you know, it was a bizarre situation without fans in the building uh, after the tornado hit during the Alabama Mississippi State game. And, and I, I went over to Georgia Tech to watch those games. We ended up losing that game. Um, where Mikhail Riley hit the three, goes into overtime, lose to Mississippi State. Uh, Georgia, Kentucky was supposed to play after us. That game got postponed uh, until the next day. Georgia had to play a couple of day uh, games on the same day. But um, they moved it for different reasons, obviously. Sure. Uh, the, the Georgia Dome was damaged. Uh, there were some fans in the building. There were band, you know, band and cheerleaders, which gives it a little bit of atmosphere. Um, but that was something that, that coaches had to deal with them. And, but this is different. Um, you know, there are health fears. Um, and, and listen, you know, I've talked to some people and, and, you know, I don't know where you stand and, and, but on this, and it doesn't really matter, but I, I you, you talk to a lot of different people and, you know, half the people think this is insanity and it's completely overblown. And, and, you know, we're just overreacting to something that, um, you know, isn't, as big a deal is is some in the media are lead, letting us believe it to be, uh, and then you know there are other people that they that are they're really scared, uh, and and you know that's a legitimate fear, and you know well, I mean their fears are I don't know you know I, I think there's a lot of unknowns with with the reality of what's going on, um, but you know there there are some people that are you know that they, they think that this is uh, that. that what's being done maybe is right or isn't even enough um, to, to go to um, more drastic measures. So there, there's a lot of confusion. Um, I think, you know, where I stand, I, I don't think we know. I, I don't think we know how this is going to turn out. Absolutely uncharted waters uh, in all areas, but uh, how, you know, players, I, I think, you know, just being around um, players over the years, I, I think they'll dial, get dialed in be focused coaches will, will talk about, you know, they spend 99% of their time by themselves in the gym anyway, with no fans, yeah. uh, either working out on their, their own or in practice. So that will be, I think a comfort zone uh, for, for these guys out on the court. You know, they played in AAU games without a ton of fans there. They played in different scenarios at the park, at pickup. Um, you know, you're used to playing without fans. I think it'll be strange to watch, um, the people that are there, I think it'll be odd to watch on TV. Um, so it, it'll it'll be a strange deal. But uh, you know, the the thing that makes March Madness great, uh, that makes the tournament here in Nashville and, and the SEC tournament is it, there's a buzz, there's an energy in the building uh, because of the fans. There won't be that, so you're going to have to create your own energy. And that's something that these coaches, I'm sure, are preaching to their players right now. All right, let's let's go on like the game's going to go. Uh, they played, obviously, it's been a little while ago, but Tennessee uh, won a, uh, the game here in Tuscaloosa, 69-68. Uh, John Fulkerson was a problem for Alabama. Uh, 22 points, uh, Bowden, uh, 20 points. What does Alabama do de- defensively uh, maybe to hold those guys down a little bit? Well, yeah, the good news is Herb Jones is back in this game, yeah. and I think he could have been a difference maker in the first matchup in Tuscaloosa. Obviously, Herb's still not 100%, but he's closer than he was a couple of weeks ago and, and even last week. So hopefully uh, he'll continue to progress. Um, and, you know, Alabama di- didn't do a great job on a couple of guys, but turned it over way too much. I think 20 turnovers in that first matchup. Yeah. And Tennessee with Eve Pons, who's the SEC Defensive Player of the Year, um, you know, I thought it should have gone to Herb Jones, but hard to argue with the, the year that Pons has had. Um, you know, they, they've got some, some really good players and they've had, uh, you know, uh, uh, considering some of the injuries they've had, uh, with Lamonte Turner going out, uh, they, you know, they've had a, a nice season and Rick Barnes does a great job. One of the best coaches in college basketball. Um, when, you know, they, they had a fortunate break when, um, they lost Lamonte Turner to have, um, Santiago Viscovi. Uh, thank you very much for being able to pronounce his name coming <laughs> Coming in into the fold, yeah, thank you. Um, and he, you know, point guard uh, from Europe. He, he's 
been much better lately. Um, didn't didn't play great in Tuscaloosa, but he's someone that uh, can score, can pass the ball. Um, not sure that that he can keep Kyra Lewis in front of him, so that'll be a matchup to watch. But he's a good player, and Fulkerson's been probably from last year to this year probably the most improved player in in, in the SEC. Uh, where is Alabama mentally? So I, I don't buy into. Uh, some of the people say, ah, after the Missouri game, they're done. They packed it in. I, say, I just don't think that has any bearing on how you play in the tournament. Uh, I don't think it means that you'll play good, but I don't think it means you play bad either. I think sometimes uh, it's a new season. Uh, you have a little bit of time away. You get a uh, refocus. Uh, March is always a fun time. I know it's different uh, this year, but I have a sense that Alabama will be ready to go. Uh, you won't see the team that – uh, played against Vanderbilt. You won't see the team that was at Missouri. I think you'll see them at their best. Now, whether that's good enough, uh, only time will tell. But uh, how do you think they are mentally uh, with all the – forget the distractions that are going on now. That's hard to tell. But uh, coming into this game based off of what happened at Missouri and Vanderbilt. Yeah, I think they're in a good place mentally, um, you know, just from being around them a little bit. You know, the, the coaching staff has been real positive. Talking about a lot of the things you're you're saying right now, it's a new season, um, fresh start. You know, a chance to to stay in Nashville, win some games, get get the postseason play. And, and right now, and I think you know we you know I've talked about it through text. I mean, the NIT is not a guarantee um, with with how difficult it is to make that tournament right now with it going to 32 teams and the automatic qualifiers. Uh, from from all the leagues that don't make the NCAA tournament. Uh, and I think postseason w- is important uh, in year one. To, you're trying to establish a culture. You're trying to continue to play. Um, you know, you've got guys that are coming back from injury. Now, this team could also get on a run, and there's nobody here in Nashville that Alabama can't beat. Um, they, they've proven that over the course of the year. They've also proven that there's nobody that you can't lose to. <laughs> and uh, Tennessee, obviously, fits into that category, have a having come to Tuscaloosa and won a close game. But uh, I think that the attitude is right. I think they're excited to be here. I think the dynamic of not having fans in the building um, will be strange, uh, you know, but, you know, both teams are going to have to overcome it. Um, You you make the argument that advantage Alabama on that, because here we are in Tennessee playing Tennessee. Uh, So they were obviously going to have more fans, but uh, it'll be a, a unique situation for all these guys. Uh, especially at the college level. They're not used to playing college games uh, in front of empty buildings. But, uh, you know, that's the hand you're dealt. That's what you have to go with. And whoever's ready to go, I think, will have the advantage and win the game. Uh, lastly, Kyra Lewis, uh, first team all SEC. Uh, he's had quite a year. I think he's uh, stepped up his uh, his shooting. I think his in-between game has gotten much better. I can just see the work uh, that he's put in. I see the work John Petty's put in. So I do think these guys have improved. I do think they battle a lot of adversity with injuries, guys in and out of the lineup. But just talk about uh, the season that Kyra's put together so far here just with the uh, postseason uh, starting today. Well, he's had a great year. And so happy for him that he was named first team all his SEC. Also happy for John Petty uh, that – that what he did was rewarded this year and, and was named second team all SEC. I thought both guys were deserving of that. Herb Jones on the all defensive team, Jaden Shackelford, who um, had an incredible year, kind of came out of nowhere nationally, is one of the top freshmen in the country. I don't think a lot of people expected that. Um, when I saw him play earlier in the, or excuse me, this summer for the first time, I thought, wow, this guy is better than his his stars indicate out of high school uh, and he's had a tremendous year, but Kyra uh, has put himself in a position where he's going to have to make a decision after the year. Cause he uh, more than likely will be a first round NBA draft pick if he decides to come out. Uh, and that's, um, you know, credit to him and the work that he's put in. And Nate Oates has talked about establishing a culture and he's one of those guys along with Shackelford and, and, and Petty and some others that live in the gym and that you got to run out because they're, they're trying to work on their game and get better. And there's no substitute for hard work. And, and Kyra Lewis is a great example of putting work in and he's uh, seeing the success as a result. Well, Brian, if you want to make sure you get in the game today, follow Wimp over there. I guarantee you he can get you in. So he will. 
<laughs> he will get you through the gates uh, <laughs> somehow. <laughs> I've never seen him. <laughs> I've never seen any place he couldn't get in. It's unbelievable. Uh, so just hook on his hip, walk fast. He'll have that person checking the ticket or checking the credential so <laughs> confused. You'll be you'll be sitting down putting your headset on before they even figure out you're in there. So uh, that's free uh, that's free advice. Th- thank you very much, and I may take you up on it. <laughs> Brian, I appreciate you being on. Hopefully, the game and you guys, uh, you and Chris, do an outstanding job. So uh, people get to listen to you today because they they can't be in the arena. So uh, that'll be awesome. Thanks, Brian. All right, appreciate it, Barry.